Good morning. My name is Bill Spencer. I work on the Microsoft Teams engineering uh, organization. And uh, this morning I am joined by um, Skyler and Spencer from our partner uh, Avpoint. And we are going to describe Microsoft Teams, the hub for teamwork in Office 365, now with support for Government Community Cloud. And some of you may be asking, why do I need another collaboration tool for Microsoft? I have Outlook, I have SharePoint, Skype for Business, why Teams? And the simple answer is that the way we have worked, or way we are working today, is very different from even five or much more ten years ago. So today it's much more common to have uh, mobile devices as, as part of our uh, regular business practice. Uh, people are often working remotely uh, from home. Um, they're often um, collaborating uh, both within their organization as well as with sister organizations and outside uh, of government with uh, constituents, partners, uh, suppliers. And in those situations, uh, Teams is really helpful for organizing a project. So the simple answer is, Teams saves time. And in my case, I save at least an hour a day. Most of the people who I work with, um, or most of the people, I should say customers, I've talked to about this, they estimate that their employees are saving 15 to 20 minutes a day conservatively uh, using um, Teams in addition to, say, Outlook. So in my example, I might have spent four hours a day in Outlook uh, going back a year or two uh, before I started using Teams um, as intensely as I do now. And um, now I've cut that in half, so I'm spending two hours a day in Outlook. My job is very externally focused, so I still get a lot of email. But um, I'm only doing an hour of communication in Teams. That's the equivalent of what I was doing uh, with two hours in Outlook. So that's why I feel like I'm saving an hour. But I think another uh, thing that's facing so many organizations is within the next uh, two to five years, perhaps half their organization or more is up for retirement. So there's going to be this exodus of talent, expertise, and knowledge. And a great way to capture that information in sort of a group memory tool is group chat like Microsoft Teams. So it really makes sense to take a look at this. It's included at no additional cost in your Office 365 license. And we're seeing really rapid adoption of uh, Teams. Um, now, if you're adding you know, both government and commercial, um, over 320,000 organizations uh, worldwide are using Teams. This is the fastest growing application in Microsoft history, business application, I should say, in Microsoft history. And today there are over 1,500 government agencies um, uh, at the state, local, and federal level uh, using Teams. So that includes 13 federal agencies, 87 state agencies, over 340 uh, county agencies and over 340 uh, cities are using Teams. And um, because Teams is designed for enterprise grade, it should be no surprise that there are over 100 customers that have 10,000 or more monthly active users on Teams. And this is really saying something because uh, there is another tool, uh, Slack, that's been out in the market for um, um, well, I'd say at least six years, and it has it does not have a hundred uh, customers with over ten thousand or more active uh, users. So you know, Teams is really designed for uh, commercial grade, uh, enterprise grade um, use, and it's the only group chat application that supports the government cloud. So uh, Teams is available. Um, uh, it, well, it's written as a web service, and then it's wrapped for the Windows and Mac desktops. So essentially the same features are available on Windows, Mac, and the web simultaneously. And then we have great clients for the uh, iPhone, iPad, and Android uh, platforms. So you know, I really encourage people to not only install on their desktop, but to also install it on their mobile device. And as I go through this, you'll see that it's a real time savings to be able to check what's going on very quickly uh, on, your, um, on your iPhone or Android. So these are the four design pillars of Teams, uh, that it would be the one place for all of your team activity, combining chat, apps, and meetings. 
that is integrated with the rest of Office 365. And you'll see how that integration works. But, um, you know, for example, Teams may be the most convenient way for many of your users to access SharePoint. Um, and it, you know, pulls together so much uh, within Office 365. That's why we call it the hub for teamwork. It's customizable and extensible. So each of the chat rooms in Teams can be customized so that it can become the single source of truth for any topic or project that a given team is collaborating on. And it's all based on Office 365 security and compliance. So what's great about Teams is it really offers the lowest cost of management, uh, total cost of ownership, because um, the, the uh, conversations in Teams can be treated exactly like email messages. And um, the other nice thing about Teams is it supports not only Government Community Cloud, but also uh, GDPR, the EU model clauses, so uh, the data is encrypted at rest and the data is encrypted over the wire. So, you know, the most secure app um, Microsoft offers uh, our own um, uh, team that does mergers and acquisitions uses Teams uh, as its preferred way of collaboration because it's more secure than other options. And uh, Teams also supports uh, HIPAA, FERPA for education and health applications as well as the relevant ISO and SOC standards. So it's really a great, uh, a great uh, option for you to consider. And now is a great time to pilot it. I know one thing that's holding back some people is concern about governance. And this is an area Microsoft's improving. But in the meantime, our partner Avpoint has a great solution for governance. And Skylar, if you could take over uh, my desktop, I'd appreciate or take over, uh, display your desktop. But um, you should consider uh, Avpoint uh, as an option for uh, a governance solution if uh, that's an area of concern for you. And <clears throat> I have a, a chat window on the side, so I encourage you to um, enter your, um, your questions in that chat window, and I'll try to answer them as uh, we get through the demo. So thank you, uh, Skylar, for sharing your desktop. And I just want to orient people on what we're seeing here. So uh, Teams has um, three major regions, if you will. Uh, there is the dark purple column on the far uh, left. That's called the app bar. And the uh, key apps there are activity, which is almost like an inbox, chat, Teams, meetings, and files. And when uh, you know Skylar clicks on one of those, for example, if she clicks on chat, you can see that it switches the white column, which is called the left rail, and then the light gray area, which is called the main arena. And um, so navigating the apps on the far uh, left app bar uh, sets up the, the, the next column, which is the white column. If you could click back on Teams just to sort of populate everything. There we go. And um, in the white column, uh, the left rail, we see a few things. At the very top, there's a small icon, um, a piece of paper with a pen, and that is for starting a new chat conversation. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then um, in the, 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 the body of the white column is where we list uh, teams or uh, chats, whatever uh, is relevant for the app that you are uh, navigating on. Let's talk about Teams for a little bit because that's kind of the, the center of, um, of uh, the application. And um, a team is a like a distribution list for group chat. So think of it as an email distribution list, an alias, if you will. And um, uh, it can have up to 2,500 people on a team. And any individual uh, can be on an unlimited number of teams. Uh, typically, we see people on you know half a dozen or less teams. It varies. I'm on I'm on probably 20 teams. Um, and then um, underneath uh, the team, if uh, Scholar would click on say public safety, and notice there's a little uh, carrot on the uh, left side, of the icon there, and you can tell a team because it has an, an icon. Um, in the case of public safety, that blue icon. And um, there's also a very obvious dot, dot, dot on the uh, right side. And that's called the More menu. 
and you'll see almost everything in Teams has that more menu. So if you're looking to do something and you don't know how, look for the more menu and chances are you'll find uh, what you're looking for. Now, always beneath the team header is the first channel or chat room and that's always called general. And the general channel uh, typically has um, all the information about when the team was created, as people were added, as additional uh, channels were added beyond general. And, um, you know, you could think of it as a, as a journal and as a place for, for announcements on the team. So it's kind of a starting place, but typically people will have additional um, channels or chat rooms about specific topics or projects. So in the case of the public safety team, they're collaborating on their public safety campaign and, uh, and marketing. So those are two additional topics. Now, if there is a channel with new content that you haven't read yet, you'll see the name of that channel in bold. So that's why campaign and marketing are in bold. Uh, why don't we click on campaign just to see what's new there. And um, if you could scroll up, we could find the, uh, the last read. It's been a while, there we go, there's the last red line. And um, uh, you know, you can see a few things in Teams. So Teams um, keeps track of uh, your place, so it's easy for you to go back. And anything new is at the bottom of the main arena, that light, that light gray area. So the newer messages are on the bottom, and that's because Teams is designed so that you read from you know top down, just as you would read a page. And it's easy to stay on top of uh, conversations. Um, let's just talk a little bit more about the left rail and then I'll, I'll pay attention uh, in, into the main arena a little bit more. So you can organize your teams in order. They generally are, just like I was saying with the messages, the newest team is on the bottom. But uh, say for example if you wanted to make emergency response higher in your list, you can click on it and drag it up and put it on the top. There we go and put on the top of your list and then clicking on the little um, carrot on the uh, the left side we can expand out and see the channels in emergency response. Now another thing you'll notice about Teams is that um, you have a choice as to which channels you display as sort of your default reading list if you will and in this case under emergency response Skylar has a general uh, corrections and the upgrade project but she has two more channels that are buried. Now the nice thing about this uh, option of put things into more channels is it um, cleans up your you know user experience and simplify things. You can always access those so she can navigate to read about the budget for example just by uh, clicking on the word budget and if she wants to set this channel as a favorite notice it's in italics uh, because it's not a favorited channel she can click on that star that appears um, on the right side of the uh, left rail or on the star that's up at the top of the navigation of the main arena. So in both places. And then if she wanted to, for example, remove corrections, she can go into the dot, dot, dot or more options, click on remove it as a favorite, and it adds it to the more channels. So it's, you know, you have complete control. No one else sees your view. So this is sort of a customized view of, um, of the, uh, uh, the teams that you're on and the channels that you've set as your favorites. Now at the bottom of the left rail is the option to join or create a team. And if you are a team owner, you have uh, that little uh, um, settings wheel there to, um, uh, to manage your teams and that allows you to do things like archiving the team, uh, seeing you know in, at a glance uh, who's on the team and uh, there's additional capabilities coming uh, to that uh, to that uh, that settings uh, at the bottom of the left rail. Okay so we've talked about the first two areas the um, app bar and the left rail and now let's talk about the, the third area which is in light gray called the main arena and um, there are um, five elements of it I want to talk about. At the very top is a search box. 
So um, we're, we are in the budget channel, but let's just do a, a search on the word budget in that white box at the top and uh, click on budget and then hit return. And you'll notice that the left rail now has changed and it has all of the messages and search results. So uh, let's click on one of those and it brings us right into the channel and chat room where um, the budget item was being discussed. Um, also notice there are what we call tabs across the top of the left rail. So the next one is people and there's none there that really respond to uh, uh, budget. Now, let's click on files and we can see all of the files that include the word budget. So Teams is a very powerful search capability which is really helpful if you join a team that's already been going on for a while and you want to get up to speed on something. You can easily search and find what you're looking for. And this is so helpful for people who are just joining a team but also if you have, if you're a member of a team that has a bunch of different projects going on and there are some that you're kind of aware of but you're not kind of you're not driving well teams can help you stay on top of those projects without having for example your inbox full of all of this information that you only look at maybe you know once a month and in the case of teams you can browse to that particular channel and and just review what's going on or you can conduct a search and find something and I'll often you know, find something unexpected. I'll do a search on, say, a technology uh, that we're working on, like um, like bots, and I'll find that there's something new going on with bots and guest access, uh, another area in in the product. And I wouldn't have known that that connection was there, but by doing searches, I can really find some interesting cross uh, cross pollination of ideas um, and and find what's going on, even though it's not a, a core area. Now. In, um, in Outlook, it would be hard to stay on top of that. You know, people aren't going to be forwarding you messages on projects that you're not, you know, directly related to, uh, and sometimes just out of courtesy. And what's nice about Teams is it's so easy to stay on top of a broad set of information um, uh, without having to read everything every day. That's where I think a lot of the time savings comes from, is that I have the information, but it's not something I have to process on a daily basis because maybe there's an action item buried in one of those email messages, you know, that sometimes I feel like I'm a slave to my inbox because I'm trying to uh, stay on top of um, what could be very poorly formatted, um, you know, requests to, to do something. You know, maybe I'm CC'd or even I'm a part of a large group and maybe they don't even like call out that this is something I have to do. Well, in Teams, we really make an effort to put the burden on the person posting a message to make it clear who should read that message and we'll, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so that's the search box and you can see how the search box interacts with the left rail. Uh, could you click on the back arrow in the upper left corner just so we can get back into our team view? You might have to do it twice. There we go. Okay. Now we're back into um, uh, this view of a channel within the team, the budget channel within the emergency response team. And that's clear from the next line down, right below the search box, uh, is what we call the navigation bar. And we can see the name of the team, and you'll notice that that's clickable. Uh, then there's budget, there's the star saying this is a favorite, the dot, 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 or the more menu for the channel level. This is just like the dot, dot, dot on the um, left rail. Uh, so let's show that. If you um, yeah, so clicking on that dot 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 in the navigation bar, we can see that we can uh, do a number of commands. And then going over onto the um, left rail, if we hover on the side of budget, we can see a dot 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 appears. And basically the same commands are also available there as well. Both of those are more menus at the channel level. Perfect. And you'll notice right below emergency response, it lets you know that this team has guests. So guest access is a great aspect of Teams. Um, for every licensed user, you can have up to five guests at no additional cost to you or the guests. And all of this is done with um, Office 365 admin controls. So the admin can determine whether um, your organization allows guests. And if guests are allowed, it can uh, the admin can determine who 
is allowed to invite guests and some of the capabilities of the guests for example domains can be blocked or allowed you also an admin can also restrict the the access the guests have so for example blocking their access to files and can set up multi-factor authentication so a guest could be as well authenticated as one of your employees which is a pretty nice option so when you add a guest to a team they have access to all the channels on that team and in this case you know in the budget channel it's alerting us that the team has guests that's actually a hot item you can click on that and see who the guests are which we're not going to do right now well we did do that there we go you can see who the guests are and then beneath the navigation bar is the tab line so just as I mentioned earlier in the left rail there appear tabs when you click on when you conduct a search well in the main arena there are tabs in both channels and chat conversations in this case we're in the channel and we can see there's a conversations tab the files tab and then there's some additional tabs that have been created tasks project budget and then there's a plus sign for adding additional tabs beneath the tab and we'll talk more about the tabs later beneath the tab line is the you know the main body of the main arena and you can see that these conversations are threaded so for example right in the middle there's a post from me with the attaching a project budget spreadsheet and there have been three replies clicking on where it says three replies it'll expand out those responses and we can see you know Glenn responded Ali responded and then there's the option for Skylar to hit reply right at the bottom and say something along the lines of you know thanks I'm checking on the budget too and why don't we use one of our first at mentions here why don't we say thanks Ali and do an at sign and you'll notice it gives her the chance to choose Ali's name and then I like the way she backspaces over his last name so it makes it a little less formal and then she can hit return to send it perfect so that's an example of how you would respond to a thread the fifth area I'm going to talk about in the main arena is at the very bottom what's called the compose box and that is where she can start a new thread and we'll show that in just a minute so let's let's get some work done here uh, let's create our new team a training team and to do that we're going to go to the bottom of the left rail where it says join or create a team clicking on that uh, it says create a team now, there's a few things I want to just quickly point out many of you may not have the option to create a team and that's because your um, office 365 admin has limited who can create a team so um, uh, that is uh, you know an example of the time, types of controls we give to admins and um, it's also where you could join uh, public teams so when you go to this you may see public teams and we're going to create one of those right now so let's create a team name called uh, training 23 perfect and instead of making a private team which only the team owners can add members we're going to make this a public team where anyone up to the 2,500 limit can join the team. Notice that there is the option for classifying the information on this team. And this is something I really encourage um, organizations to set up. And for example, you could restrict that um, uh, highly classified uh, teams or content would not be able to um, add a guest. So that's the kind of um, infrastructure that you can set up as an administrator you also for example could have a different retention policy for different types of um, sensitive information so perhaps a highly confidential information you'd want to keep longer uh, and you can set up a longer retention policy for them and then you'll also notice there's the option for creating a team using an existing team as a template and what's nice about this is if you're on a project team 
and it's really well designed and you know think things improve over time so an existing project team probably has some real interesting channels and tabs that have been set up appropriately you can go and create a new project team using an existing project team as a template which is helpful and let's we're not going to do either of those options but we're going to click next creating this public team and we're going to add Spencer to it and why don't you add myself as well thank you and could you promote both of us to being owners and this is important whenever you create a team uh, either public or private you can go ahead and click uh, close that's fine it's always important to have more than one owner you know you might be out on vacation something might have to change on the team and um, you know the team doesn't want to wait for you to come back so have another owner and the odds are that uh, someone will be available to make whatever changes are necessary on the team. Okay, so we created a new team, and you'll notice that there are these three helpful buttons in the middle uh, to add more people, create more channels, open the FAQ. You'll also notice uh, in the left rail that under Training 23, there is, just as I said, the channel that's created by default, the general channel, and notice that it keeps almost a journal of what Skylar's done here that she joined the team, that she added myself and uh, Spencer Bullock, that um, she made us owners. Okay, so now click on the Compose box and uh, welcome everyone to the training team. Perfect, and hit return. And that's an example of a very simple post, which is great. Um, but let's uh, and, and let's uh, Spencer, if you wouldn't mind responding to that, so we can see what it looks like. And could you use an at mention when you respond to Skylar, so that she can see, or that everyone can see what it looks like to be on the receiving end of an at mention. Perfect. Thank you, Spencer. So notice that. Um, there is uh, her name is in red and bold and also notice that there is a badge on the side and um, she can respond and say thank you and then do the at mention for Spencer and uh, you can see what it looks like again to be on the sending side perfect great so those are two comparisons of sending and receiving uh, great. Now let's um, uh, let's create a new channel. Uh, let's click on the button beneath that large. Um, well, I guess it's kind of green uh, circle. Um, oh, yeah. I like that uh, Spencer Bullock has added a, a giphy here. Let's see. notice how she clicked on see more, and she can click to play it. That's perfect. And then scrolling down, she can collapse it. Um, by clicking on see less. There we go. Great. Now let's click on create more channels. And um, let's uh, create the budget channel. And click on add. Perfect. And um, let's uh, make this a little bit more um, um, uh, of a, a complex message. So we gave an example of a, 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 a simple message. Clicking on the A with the pen beneath the word start, the compose box expands to a compose form and it includes these formatting options, uh, bold, italics, underline, etc., and a subject line, which is really helpful. So let's uh, put on there uh, budget approval as the subject. Excellent. And let's uh, click and say, um, you know, at Spencer. So we'll do an at mention for Spencer. You'll notice I use at mentions quite a bit. I definitely think any new thread should have an at mention. And I also think that um, uh, it's uh, a good policy to almost always include an at mention whenever you're posting in Teams because there should be someone who's the main recipient of a message. So in this case, you can have at Spencer, uh, please review and approve my budget. 
my proposed budget, I guess. Excellent. And um, let's attach the budget. So let's click on the paperclip icon and look for the budget in your desktop. Notice it's spinning up in the background um, a SharePoint uh, share. And clicking on the desktop, we do the project budget. And could you include the project timeline as well? Attach both of those. Click on open. And notice there is the light green status bar. Oops, I don't know what happened there. Great. So that light green status bar completed. And now let's click, uh, let's type uh, hit return and type FYI colon and um, let's include everyone in the training team. So, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, you're doing a great job getting ahead of me. Uh, you didn't need to type that. I was going to do an at mention for the team. So at mention for the team. Uh, okay, that's fine. We do at mention for the channel. That's fine. At mention the budget channel. And it's just by typing channel. And then let's do at mention for the team. And start typing team. And it will respond with uh, training. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and notice, uh, just to make this point, you could do at mention and start to type the word channel. And it will fill in channel. So type at mention and start to type the word channel. Great. So you can see how it resolves. I just wanted to give people an example. And then backspace and start to type the word team at mention and start to type the word team. And it puts in the name of the team. Perfect. OK. I just wanted to make sure people saw how that worked. OK. Great. And uh, that means that everyone on the uh, budget channel who set it as a favorite or anyone on the training team, which would be everyone, everyone on the team, they will uh, see this at mention um, and they'll um, get a notification. Uh, let's talk about notifications. Uh, Spencer, if, in, if you could do an at mention in the general channel for um, Skylar, people can see what it looks like to be uh, getting an at mention when you are not in a particular channel. But with that, let's uh, hit send. and. Uh, actually, let's hit return and add a fun element here. Um, there's three of them. There are um, the uh, emojis. So that's the smiley face with the circle around it. And we could just choose one of these that you want to add. Perfect. Then there is the GIF. Let's click on that and uh, search for the word uh, thanks. And uh, let's see what comes up here. Some of these are good. Choose one of these. There we go, always popular. And then uh, let's click on the smiley face with the square around it. This is a sticker which you can um, compose yourself. I like the boy on the beach with the, the I assume it's a fistful of sand. But uh, let's make the top caption go and at the bottom uh, team. There we go. So you can customize these. And um, let's hit the paper airplane icon in the lower right in order to send this. So that's an example of you know how you send when you're in the compose form. So we've got uh, you know quite a uh, quite a quite a lot going on. This is one of those messages that will definitely stand out. It's got attachments, it has um, emojis. Um, one thing we really didn't do was any formatting. So let's let's go back in and edit it. Going up into the upper right corner, so I mentioned there's almost always a hidden dot 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 clicking on that we can click on edit and uh, let's do a few things um, let's um, let's select the word proposed and um, put it in bold and italics and let's change the color that's the a with the pen under it the a with the uh, the uh, underline and change it to whatever color you want there we go 
Perfect. And let's make uh, an exclamation mark uh, to make this an important message. Great. All right. Hit uh, the paper airplane icon again to send this off. I think you've got to do it. Yeah, you got to scroll down. Scroll your page down a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Yeah, that's something I, I miss sometimes too. So uh, I'm glad you showed that, Skylar. Also notice there's a few other things besides the, um, the edit command. Um, you know, on the dot, dot, dot for a message, you can delete the message, mark it as unread, copy a link. Sometimes, particularly when I'm on my mobile device, I'll mark things unread so I can come back to them. But another way to do that is by clicking on the, um, the saved icon, and it will add this to a separate list, almost a list of action items. Notice up there in a profile picture. So we'll, uh, we'll show that in a little bit more detail later. And also notice that uh, Spencer has given her a thumbs up. Uh, the thumbs up is a great way of acknowledging messages. And you know, I use it for thank you, yes, I'm going to do that, and also to give people uh, encouragement, like I support whatever post the post they made. So these are all examples of um, uh, great ways to uh, simplify uh, your responses and save time. Now, when you do a thumbs up, it actually um, puts something in the activity box, the activity app in the top uh, left corner, and you'll notice that there's two items there. Uh, for Skylar. We'll, we'll show those in a little bit, but um, that's just an example of what um, uh, Teams does. And now we can uh, give um, Spencer a thumbs up on his um, on his reviewing it. So you're acknowledging, you know, he's going to work on it. Now uh, we attach two documents here, and you could think of these as just like attachments in email, but actually in Team, all the files are uh, stored in um, SharePoint. So in the background, um, on the Files tab, we can see what um, where those uh, those files are stored. And um, you know this view into SharePoint is so convenient. A lot of people using Teams have started to use SharePoint more, but in a sense. They're only coming at it through Teams because it's more intuitive to think about where files are stored based on the group of people you're collaborating with, you know, the teams, the various project teams you're on, and then the topics or projects underneath those teams. And if you go to the Files tab, you can always find the latest information in terms of any, uh, any documents. You don't have to scroll through all of the messages in the Conversations tab. You find them right here in the Files tab. And you'll notice that this is, um, you know, very similar to SharePoint. You can open SharePoint, you know, right in the middle there if you wanted to. But, um, you know, more importantly, um, everything that you need to do in SharePoint, generally you'll find it here in Teams. And the way to see that is to go uh, under the project budget file to the dot, dot, dot on the uh, far right side. And you can see that you can edit this in Teams, open in Excel, open in SharePoint, move, copy, download, delete, rename, get a link. All these different things that you can do in SharePoint, you can do in Teams. But that last one is Teams specific, and that is make this a tab. So clicking on that, it will add the project budget to the tab line across the top. Now, this is really important because what you know Teams does is it helps a group of people emphasize certain documents by making them into these tabs and that can be for purely for reference or it can be for you know collaboration and getting work done the way to think about a tab is um, imagine that you've got your project team together and you're talking about a new project you're going to work on and often you're meeting in a conference room with whiteboards on the side and someone will get up and they'll say, well, here are the key decisions we need to make. And they'll jot those down as a list on the whiteboard. And then, um, you know, same person as someone else will write down um, maybe a timeline of, um, you know, key milestones. And there might be a discussion about the budget as sort of a third list on the whiteboard. Well, each of those three sections of the whiteboard, you could think about as these tabs within Teams. And um, what's nice about this is, um, 
you can get a lot of work done right here within these tabs. So I like to expand the tab into a bigger view. And the way to do that is using the up and down arrows on, on the, uh, the right side there. And it expands the team, the view of the main arena, to take over the left rail. And then another thing I'd often do is um, clicking on the uh, little chat icon um, on the right side. I can start a conversation. And you know you could, for example, call out to me, um, you know, at Bill, uh, please see item 12. Is that enough, you know, for legal? And um, I can respond. And uh, you can see in the response, I can post. But the other nice thing is, you know, I can go right here and edit in line and uh, change, change that in sort of real time. So it's really a great option for um, a group collaboration that, you know, what's nice about this, as you can see my update, um, not only um, can... Um, you know, we talk about it, we can see it right in line. We don't have to have these comments buried in the document. They are not only there obvious on the tab line, but uh, clicking, um, let's do the back arrow twice. So you'll notice um, I updated the spreadsheet. Um, let's click one more time. I'm sorry, or just click on the conversation. Great. Um, this whole conversation that we had on the uh, the right side in the chat window of the tab is right here within the conversation thread. So it's so great that Teams keeps track of everything in a convenient way. Anyone searching later can easily find the conversation that happened, why decisions were made, by whom, and when. So it's a great way to capture uh, sort of the process of decision making so that others can go back later, learn from it, and, um, and, and, and uh, you know, follow the best practices. So uh, let's, uh, let's add another tab, clicking on the plus on the top. Uh, let's add our project timeline. And to do that, you'll notice that we have the options for a SharePoint document, Excel, put in a Power BI report, a PowerPoint, SharePoint, Wiki, Word. Let's click on PowerPoint and click on the project timeline. But before we hit enter, let's change this tab name to timeline. And click save. Perfect. OK, so now we've got our uh, project timeline. Uh, we can toggle the chat window off. Uh, to show the project timeline a little bit larger. There we go. And again, we could have a conversation about it. We can interact about it. Say that the timeline becomes more important than uh, the budget over time. We can change the tab by grabbing it and sliding it over and putting it before the project budget. That's perfect. And um, you'll notice the default tabs are conversation and files. And those two are always in the top the first two positions. And then a wiki is sort of a lightweight version of OneNote. Clicking on wiki, let's change that to uh, the name decision. So clicking on the little carrot next to it, we can click on rename and we can change this and click save. I like to, you know, capture uh, key decisions that were made over time and uh, this is a great way of doing it. So, um, you know, that it gives you a sense for how teams can be used to really uh, keep a project team on track. And each one of these channels can be customized so that it is the single source of truth for any particular project or uh, topic 
that uh, on which a team is collaborating. Now, um, in the left rail, you can see that there is an at mention for Skylar because there is that one um, in on the on the right side there, and uh, it's also in bold, so something's on red. Let's click back on general, and I want to notice that the tabs are different in general. So that customization of adding the timeline and the project budget, that was only in the budget channel. Each channel has its own custom set of tabs. And um, there is the at mention uh, that, um, uh, and you can respond to Spencer and say, you know, let's add Rima. And just to see how we might do that, um, yeah, you can't do an at mention yet. Let's scroll up. Uh, let's scroll up to um, those first set of things, and it was says add more people. Click on that, and we can add Rima. Rima Reyes. There she is. Okay. Add Rima. Click add, and notice we'll just keep her as a member, and click close. So in a team, you can have up to five hundred people. A hundred of them can be um, team owners, so you can have quite a few team owners. All right, so that is you know a quick overview of the major regions in Teams and how channels work. We've talked about the use of at mentions, and we've talked about uh, the notifications that come from an at mention. Uh, let's look at one of those right now. Let's go up into the Activity app, which, as I mentioned earlier, is like an inbox for Teams. So all of the places where people have given uh, likes, so you can see the like for me uh, is the top there, where there have been at mentions, those are all captured here. So often while I'm commuting, I or you know walking between meetings, etc., I will be uh, using my mobile device and I will be going through my activity and seeing where people have specifically you know called out for me to read a given message. And this is the big time savings in Teams, is instead of just like, you know, throwing email out to the world, in Teams, the poster, the person posting a message, has the burden of at mentioning, ideally individually, the people they want to read a given message. And we'll have at mention, we'll have posts sometimes with 15 or more at mentions on them, because the person posting wants that to show up in um, their audience's um, uh, uh, act activity app. And uh, when you see something that you need to follow up on, um, you can um, use it, uh, use the uh, saved uh, item that we talked about earlier. It's kind of like a little bookmark. So let's say, for example, um, you know, I responded and, um, to Skylar's message about adding 4,000, making it 4,000, she can save that by hovering on the right side of that particular message, actually down in the main arena, uh, Skylar. And there, I was going to do the one below it, but you could do the one. There we go. Click saved. It'll bring her back to this message, so we'll show that in a minute. Another nice thing is you can filter these in order to look specifically for your at mentions. So, you know, I was gone over the uh, Martin Luther King weekend, and when I came back, I did a filter on at mentions because there had been some activity and I hadn't been on top of things. So clicking on the at mention, I can filter for those items, and then I can quickly go through those specific topics. Now, I'd mention this as the uh, inbox because the default is to see your at mentions and your likes. But if you click on the uh, feed at the top, or you, you can clear the at mentions if you want. Uh, yeah, clear that. But if you click on where it says feed, you can also see my activity. And you could think of this as your sent mail folder. Uh, so this includes all the posts that Skylar has done. So if you wanted to do a cross post, it'd be easy to go back and find something you'd done earlier and then uh, and cross post it. Um, you know, copy it over to another um, thread or to get a link and post it over. Now let's talk about the chat app. So um, clicking on chat, um, uh, let's create a new chat. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can type in the person's name in the search box 
or you can click on the um, paper with pen. I like the paper with pen because it's um, easy to find. And uh, let's do a chat with uh, Spencer and myself. There we go. And you can ask the question, um, do you have any training material? So we created our training team, and now we're going to pull together you know, some training material. And um, Spencer can respond to that. And you'll notice when he does that a chat is different than a channel. There's a few things going on here. Notice, for example, there's in, in a group chat with you, when you have more than you know you and one other person. Uh, so larger than two people, there is a um, um, there's only two tabs: the conversation tab and the files tab. Notice you can see the status that Spencer is typing a response. So it's kind of nice. He's not like, okay, yeah, he's he's responding. I can wait, and then. Um, you can give him a thumbs up, for example. Perfect. And um, uh, it's, it's a simple answer and response. There's no reply box, so there's no threading here like you have in uh, a team channel. So chats are simpler. But what's nice is I can rename this uh, going to the, the pen after the word Spencer. I can name this um, training LT, for example, for the training leadership team. So we can have side conversations that the rest of the people in uh, the, um, the training channel can't see, which is good because it's a public channel. And um, I can also set this as one of my favorites. So let's uh, go to the, uh, the side there and right click on, there we go, dot, 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 and clicking on pin. It sets it as a favorite. Let's uh, let's pause there on the dot 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 just to show the other options. If, for example, this channel became or this chat room became very noisy, I could mute it. So I could um, uh, I could you know make it so that I wasn't getting a notification every time someone responded. And sometimes I'm in a meeting, but I've been invited to another meeting at the same time, and there's a very busy conversation in that meeting room. I'll often um, mute in that situation because I'm getting all these little pop-ups on my uh, notification bar in the lower right. So uh, that gives us a few uh, options, uh, pinning and, uh, and muting. Um, now let's um, see how we could add another person to the thread. Um, notice on the upper right, there's a few things. Uh, there is the option for uh, a conference call, an IP call. And dialing that would engage, it would call everyone who is in that chat. There is the option for sharing a screen. Uh, that's the little up arrow with the screen around it. And then finally is the option for adding additional people. So let's click on that. And we can um, um, add Rima. And in this case, um, we will include all chat history. But notice we can restrict the chat history to so many days or not include the chat history at all. So that's a nice option when you're adding people to an existing chat. Great. Now, um, the Files tab uh, in, in, a, in a chat conversation is uh, linked into your OneDrive for Business. So it's not stored in SharePoint per se. Um, it's in the OneDrive uh, set, set portion of, of SharePoint. And OneDrive for Business gives you the option of restricting the files so that only the people included in that chat have access to those files. And the files are stored in uh, a folder. And let's go down to the Files tab, Files app, excuse me, Files app on the, le on the app bar, exactly. And you'll notice a few things. Uh, you can see the recent files that have been worked with. Uh, clicking on Microsoft Teams. You can see all of the files in all of the teams you have access to. And uh, there is a consultant, a consulting firm, that viewed this option as alone justifying rolling out teams because their managers could see all of the documents across all the different project teams that they were involved in. It's almost like a heat map for uh, document creation uh, across the organization. Uh, you can look at the uh, files that have been downloaded. You can also click on OneDrive, 
and this is a view into Skylar's OneDrive and there is a uh, folder called Microsoft Teams chat files and this is where all the files are stored that Skylar has shared so if I share a folder with Skylar, if I share a file with Skylar, she'll have access to it in chat, but it won't be listed here because it's in my OneDrive folder and I'm sharing it with her. But any files that she has shared, like this webinar guide or this project, um, uh, project uh, budget, um, she, can, she can share. So for example, she can go to the dot, dot, dot on the uh, right side there for the webinar guide. Let's do the webinar guide. And let's um, select uh, copy. And then um, let's click on um, browse teams and channels and go into training. And click on um, general. and click copy. And this will copy it over and then um, she can um, um, then share that um, with the rest of the people in her chat conversation as well. And we'll show that in a minute. Um, but I wanted to show one more thing which is as, as um, scholar has been going through uh, various aspects of the demo she has um, been um, uh, saving items using the bookmark. Let's show where the bookmarks are. That's up in the profile picture. Clicking on that, there is the saved list. And clicking on saved, this populates um, her uh, list of saved items. And uh, clicking on them, she can navigate to where those bookmarks are uh, in various uh, teams and channels. And then unclicking, uh, clicking again on one of the bookmarks will remove that from the list. So, you know, in my day, I will you know, start my day, I'll go through my activity items, I'll go through my chat files, things that I need to come back to, uh, say I'm on my mobile device and I want to either talk to someone in person or I want to follow up when I'm at my desk, I will hit saved and then I'll come through and clear them. And there's this real feeling of satisfaction when I have cleared my activity, I've cleared my chat, and I've cleared my save. And then I'm really ready to uh, get my work done. And in, you know, I, f I find it as just a very significant time savings. So let's finish that last scenario. We've got two minutes left. Uh, let's click on Teams and uh, the general channel for training and click on Files. And there's the webinar guide that Skylar copied over from her, um, her OneDrive for Business. She can go to the dot, dot, dot on the uh, side there, and she can get a link to the file and copy that into her, um, her uh, clipboard. And then going back into chat, clicking on chat, go into this, okay, she's in the LT, and she can say, what do you think about this? Perfect. And let's click on the A with the pen. So we're expanding into our form again. Select the word this. There we go. And let's click on the link to embed the link, paste it in there, click insert, perfect. Let's make that a little more obvious. Let's select it again and put it bold. And yeah, the hi use the highlighter pen, yeah. Choose one of those colors, there we go. Great, and hit send. And that gives you a sense for how you can easily share information back and forth um, you know, some people are worried that Teams leads to clutter. I think it's just the opposite. I think it's both a time savings and it's an organizing method. In fact, I know people who create 
only for themselves to use. They're the only person on the team just so they can organize their information to all be you know, at their fingertips. So we're at time. Thank you so much for your attention. I really want to thank uh, Skylar and Spencer for helping me and I encourage you to take a look at um, the AvPoint solutions for governance. I'll be sending out additional information including the recording to this um, session in a thank you message. So again, I appreciate your, uh, your attention today and really encourage you to uh, start a pilot for Microsoft Teams in your uh, government agency. Bye-bye.